afternoon, good evening, good morning, Silver Stackers, Silver Lovers. You're at the Silver Spot. And guys, if you notice, we're doing something a little different this week. We're actually posting on the Silver Joker channel. Uh, I feel for reasons of sentiment, but it's also something that we're testing out for possible future shows. All right, so bear with us. I think you'll enjoy the show. Same show, different channel. Now, guys, today I am co-hosting a gentleman, of course, who needs no introduction. A guy that drives his silver around in an armored car marked ice cream. <laughs> And has a 20 millimeter chain gun, <laughs> codenamed Sprinkles. Guys, I'm talking about Silver Joker. Silver Joker, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, man. Don't touch my ice cream. <laughs> no, I won't touch ice cream. But, uh, you know, just, oh, just remember, man. you know, when they hear the music and they know that ice cream truck's coming, just to actually stay away. Don't come towards it. <laughs> right. But, guys, we're not, here to talk, <laughs> we're not here to talk about Silver Joker's security uh, protocol. We are here to talk about Silver Joker, a theory I have. Are you ready? Yes. Let's hear it. I think that central banks around the globe can control the weather. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Bear with me. Okay. We know that we are currently in a fiat cash hurricane. Fiat cash hurricane. There's fiat cash being printed all over the place. All the central banks are doing it. You know, they're just sending cash out everywhere to try to mitigate the effects of the pandemic, to try to you know um, uphold the economy and mm -hmm. to you know control certain you know market uh, asset classes and, and all this stuff. And so you know, at the eye of this hurricane, though, I think a dead center of it is silver, because when you think about it, you think about it. You know, you've got all these different, you know, asset classes and commodities and stuff. And you'll see various spikes in the real estate market and copper jumped this year. And I think lumber jumped this year. Last year, cocoa went up. And what's happening is this fiat cash hurricane, it is actually making contact with things in the eye of it in all the commodities and, you know, things that can um, um, basically display inflationary spikes, you know, are kept in the center there with the central banks making sure the hurricane doesn't move around too much because they don't want to make contact uh, with these things and create that inflation. They're trying to ward off the effects of inflation. Okay. Now, I, I think mm -hmm. I understand what you mean. But it's even more severe than that. When it comes to the monetary metals, gold, and especially silver, because remember, silver is the only asset of any kind that has never topped its 1980 high 41 years ago. Mm -hmm. All right? Things react to getting exposure to this cash hurricane as it moves around or it makes contact with. Silver, because of its history, has the chance to react the most violently to the fiat cash hurricane should that cash come in contact with it. So what do the powers that be do? They keep the spot price artificially low to make sure that silver never experiences any of that inflation because once it gets a good taste of it, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And it's going to it's going to really uh, upset the financial system as it is right now. Um, but anyway, you know, they, they're doing all this stuff. They're trying to, you know, reset the system in their own way. They're trying to, uh, you know, hold the economy together and stuff. And so they're doing all these different programs and stuff. And in fact, I think green energy right now is a really big thing. Mm -hmm. They're all looking at it. every country's looking at infrastructure spending. And a lot of that is green energy spending. Yes, I've been thinking about that a lot, you know, um, with this with the new administration. Now, green energy is the top of their a lot of their agendas. Everybody wants to um, uh, be green. Everybody wants to be environmentally conscious. And you know, I'm going to tell you something. Silver is going to pay play a big role in that. You know, consider mm -hmm. filtration, consider mm -hmm. uh, solar, and some of these other things that um, silver will pay, play a role in when it comes to electric green energy. vehicles, electric yeah. vehicles, building batteries, those kind of things. And silver is going to going to be in really big demand for that. And so to me, I'm thinking, you know, what is going to be the outcome of that? I mean, where are we going to go as far as the silver supply when demand from us individual stackers is so high and the demand for an industry for silver is so high? You know, that is a very good question because we know for a fact the industrials are not going to move. Well, they're certainly not going to go down in their demand. They are who they are. They want what they want. They're going to produce the goods and services they want to get out there to the people. And their demand for silver is not going to diminish. You know, they do stack a little differently. We do, if you want to call it stacking. You know, they acquire silver in a way that's projected out, say, you know, a period over a period of years to make mm -hmm. sure they can, you know, mitigate any, um, you know, shortages and this sort of thing. 
Um, and so, you know, their demand is always going to be there. That pressure is going to be there. The squeeze from the industrial side is going to remain <laughs> no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and so because they're fairly static in what they require, and I think that's actually going to pick up once the infrastructure spending, spending and the green energy spending, like you were talking about, starts to take effect. The powers that be, they can kind of gauge the speed and volatility of that side of the silver uh, inventory squeeze. However, on the investment side here with us stackers, uh, the physical silver side is where the um, controllers or the price manipulators are having a problem because it is so dynamic where we are. Now, I know sentiment's not the best right now. You see these different things happening in the retail space where it looks like there's more products available. Maybe there's a you know slight downtick in the premium uh, over spot in some things. And so it looks like the silver squeeze movement is losing steam. I don't think that's the case at all. I think it is optics being managed by those in control of, um, of the silver space. I think the bigger picture for me is um, demand. Demand right now is, is unprecedented. And I got to believe that a lot of these, these companies, a lot of these industries that are going to be working on these um, green energy projects that they're going to be doing, I got to believe that they saw this coming. Uh, but I think what they haven't prepared for is this unprecedented demand that we have for physical silver. So I think right. we are a, a um, part of the equation that they maybe not have calculated. And right. maybe that's going to have some influence on uh, where silver goes as far as, you know, being available for us, uh, the consumer, individual right. stackers. And so how that's going to turn out, nobody knows. The important thing for me is have that silver, get that silver in your possession because you'll be better off whatever comes with silver in your possession than not. Absolutely. And I don't want to backtrack uh, anything, but I just thought about something. So, you know, um, the industrials have always, you know, acquired silver the way they've acquired it. Now, I have heard rumors about, you know, certain big corporations like Samsung and possibly Apple, um, you know, uh, even Microsoft. You know, these guys, they are getting more creative in the ways they're acquiring silver. I think in some cases they're going straight to the mines, maybe to the refineries, you know, um, some of the mints, you know, depending on what grade of product they need, probably more or less the refineries. But whereas in the past, they just kind of seen seeing us, you know, investors as just one part of the silver space. I think they're now starting to see us a little bit as competition. Mm -hmm. OK, because what's happening on this side where we are right now, guys, and do not be uh, mistaken, there is plenty of excitement and passion building over here on the uh, investment side. The stacking is getting, you know, more intense, more chronic. Mm -hmm. The uh, creative ways to shop for it, you know, you guys are getting better at it. You know, you're you're being more forthcoming with things you learn. You know, I've learned some uh, things about things that are available from you guys as subscribers and stuff. And so all that's building. The passion for silver, the passion for stacking it, and the growth in the investment uh, class of uh, the, the silver space. So that silver squeeze now, um, which I think a lot of the leadership is having a problem with, is the fact that industrials are getting more creative in how they're acquiring, and we are growing in size and, and, and enthusiasm in stacking the silver, and it's very hard for them to control the middle or the inventories that are still available. Yeah, they're I having agree. a hard time with that. The only thing, they, only mechanism they got right now, as far as I'm concerned, is the artificially low spot price to try to quell the enthusiasm. You know, the thing is, is there is a time, there's a ticking time, you know, uh, a limit on what is going to be available in the future for silver. You know, you know, what do we do about it? We stack what we can um, while we can. But, you know, just more evidence of what they are doing out there to try to slow down the drain on the available inventories. You know, there's plenty more of these proof offerings, for example, for like 100 plus bucks, you mm -hmm. know, per ounce, this sort of thing. Um, and like I said, the artificially low spot price they try to use to quell the enthusiasm and all that. But the thing is, what you don't want to do is you don't want to uh, start to believe we're we're not gaining ground or we're not winning. We we are winning. We are um, having an effect. We are putting the squeeze on silver, and we are going to actually end up closing the silver window if we just stay on pace, continue to stack right. the way you know to stack. Um, you know, get that silver in your stack because guys. When it's gone, it's gone. Now, I can't tell you when that's going to be, but I can tell you this. We're going to be at full stride in our acquisition, full stride in our stacking, and we're going to hear a thud behind us, and that's going to be the silver window closing. You'll look back, see it's closed, and be like, man, I'm glad I stacked what I did when I did because that's pretty much it. That's right, and I would say the motivation, make that motivation 
Uh, not so much if silver is going to go to $100 or $1,000 an ounce. Um, you know, forget about that. I would say concentrate on silver not being available for you to get. Uh, that's why I would put the urgency on stacking. Not on, you know, thinking that it's going to have these huge valuations, which it possibly could. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. saying it couldn't, but I would say my motivation for stacking is having those ounces in my possession over thinking that it's going to make me rich. Absolutely. Well, guys, I hope that covered it for you today. You heard it from the man himself. Silver, the ultimate insurance policy for your financial portfolio, the ultimate savings plan in terms of premier currency that's going to last and last and last throughout any kind of um, financial changes or any kind of resets. Um, go out there and stack as much silver as you can because it is going to be your lifeboat to get to the other side of whatever's waiting for us. All right. I'm Silver 5150 telling you guys that your stack is not whack and that just 20 ounces to your name keeps you 99% ahead of the game. It absolutely does. And we're going to keep this silver train rolling. If you guys um, show up, you got a ticket to ride. You know that. So if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up really helps our channel out. If you want to see more, subscribe. Ring that bell. You'll be notified as soon as we put out another video. And, you know, let's just look out for each other. It's better to have that silver in your stack than to be looking for it when it's not available. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep stacking. Peace.